coach Tim A. Baker. Coach Baker started his coaching career in 1977 as the head JV coach at Bronson. In 1981, he started coaching at Constantine, where he coached for 31 years, retiring in 2011. His teams won conference, district, regional championships, and in 2004 were state champions. He has received regional and state coach of the year honors. Coach Baker's biggest thrill in coaching, going 3-6 in our first year in 1990, to winning the state championship in 2004, creating a program that the community of Constantine can be proud of. Coach Baker's comments on why coach. I always wanted to be a teacher and coach since a young age. It is one career you can truly make a difference in someone's life. Coach Baker's most humorous incident in coaching. After my son, the quarterback, audibles to the run at the end of the first half of the state championship game, the clock runs out with the ball on the four-yard line. I threw my headset, only to have them bounce up and hit me in the groin. <laughs> Fox Sports TV walks up and says, you're leading, you get interviewed first, and I can't talk. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the newest member of the Hall of Fame, Coach Tim A. Baker. Thank you, Mr. Carlson and Mr. Burke, for everything you do. You're going to get that a lot. Would it be a bit too much to ask for Mrs. Bailey to stand up again? <laughs> stadium in Miami two years ago and I am not an Alabama fan. <laughs> Congratulations on A.J. McCarron's 5,000 yards of passing that night of the 10,000 you coached him on. So uh, that was a rough night. But, well, some of you might be wondering where is Constantine? Of course it's at the bottom of 131, 45 miles south of Kalamazoo or as many of you might know, 10 miles north of Shipshawana, Indiana. <laughs> Ah, few people know where that's at. You've been to the flea market. <laughs> Lou Gehrig, in uh, July 4th of 1939, said, even though I've had a bad break today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of this earth. And although I have not yet had that bad break that Lou Gehrig had, tonight I consider myself one of the luckiest people in the world to be up here with all these guys in this room with all of you. Not many people get to make a living doing something they dreamed about since they were a young kid. When I was in the fifth grade at Menden Elementary, I knew I wanted to be a teacher and a coach. I would get in trouble for drawing up plays to run at the noon recess, because that was the longest recess, and that's when we had the best games. I was lucky to go to Menden High School when there were many good athletes. I was always part of a championship caliber team and very competitive. I was lucky to be the, I had my coach, Bob Kreitz, who's our high school coach, also a member of the Hall of Fame, and the greatest attribute I got from him is he, you never knew whether you won or lost a game. He always was the same. I was lucky to have two great parents who, when it was time for me to go to college, could afford to send me. I was lucky to have a little brother at the time, I didn't realize what I had, but today we are as close as ever. And I think about how pleased Grandpa Ernie would be to have had two grandsons, quarterback teams, to state championships. I was lucky to attend Olivet College when Doug Kay was my coach. He instilled in me an even greater desire to coach and teach. At 78 years of age, he is still coaching in the Arena Football League in Tampa, Florida. In 1977, I was lucky to get a job in Bronson, Michigan, where I met two of the biggest influences in my coaching career. Bruce Ford taught me how to coach football, but more than anything, he taught me how to be humble. And it's, you got to be humble when you play a guy about 75 times in three and three and you never beat him. <laughs> Phil Wada 
He taught me how to organ, uh, organization, attention to detail, and never give the number one sign until you won it all. And the only picture you'll ever see me doing this is after we won the state championship. In 1980, I was lucky to meet and marry the prettiest girl in Burlington, Michigan. <laughs> The Pancake Queen. <laughs> I knew it was coming. How did you get to become a Pancake Queen before some of you guys get crazy? And this is one of the reasons why I married her, because you want to marry somebody that's competitive. To be the Pancake Queen of Burlington, you had to sell the most tickets to the Pancake Supper. And when she was about 14 years old, she sold 500 and tried doing that in a town of 200. <laughs> I said, that's a competitor right there. We have raised three great kids, and I would like them to stand at this time. Christine, Austin, and his fiance Jenny, Aaron and his friend Kyle, and Andrea and her friend Eric. Manager, stand up, Eric. Thank you, Eric, because Eric, the quarterback, amended and was responsible for a couple of my losses. I appreciate that, Eric. <laughs> At the same time, I was able to coach with legendary coach Dave Horn, who gave Constantine a tradition to build on. I was lucky to be an assistant to Clyde Lowell, but more than anything, this is when I was lucky to meet Ken Reimer, who's also in Florida at this time, couldn't be here. The original Motor City Madman, Detroit Cody class of 1968, as he will tell you. To this day, he is the reason for the great discipline and work ethic that is a staple of Constantine football. I was lucky to have a person like Ethan Strasser as an assistant, who was a hometown boy. And Sean Griffith, who is now our football coach. I was lucky that Sean could come and coach at Constantine. Consistent for 13 years and head coach for the last nine years, he's a wing T guru. Coach Nussmeyer, if you uh, want to kind of get into the wing T, it can be you need to talk to this guy. <laughs> but if you think 100,000 people are pissed off because you're running the ball too much, wait until they can't find it. <laughs> Mike Tully, one of the greatest middle school coaches you can have. Mike Messner, my athletic director and a graduate of the University of Michigan. In 1991, I was lucky that Mike came to home, he's a hometown boy, to be the athletic director. And as every coach up here will know, behind every good athletic director, or every good football coach, there's a great athletic director. Thank you, Mike, for not letting some of the stuff ever get to me. And we all know what that is, don't we guys? For being that friend I could always lean on, and always having a bottle of Kessler's in the cupboard. <laughs> I was lucky to have mentors that I learned more from on one-on-one -on -one than any place you go to. Bob Knight of Portage Central, Jeff Sonic of Three Rivers. 1994, we, Jeff, Jeff is not only a great football coach, but very humorous. In 1994, we're playing Orchard Lake St. Mary. David Bowens, you might remember him. And I took one look at the film and went, oh, my Lord. I called up Jeff, and Jeff said, Tim, don't worry about it. The good thing is the trophies look the same. <laughs> Yours is just going to have a little more writing on it. <laughs> I was lucky to have a team doctor. You don't have those in Class C schools. Doc Zamont, who has given physicals, free physicals at Constantine for over 55 years. The field general, Dave Neisler, who made Sweetland Stadium one of the greatest places to play football in the state of Michigan. Our post-game parties are legendary, and tonight will probably not be an exception. <laughs> I was lucky to have 141 players in those 15 years that believed in our system and were willing to work hard to be champions. We have a saying at Cots team, Good players, good coaches, good parents. For 15 years, I was lucky to have all three. Thank you. <laughs>